because the constant watch was terminated. So is it fair to say that log was only kept because of the constant watch? Yes. All right. And that log there, is that a form sheet such as the active suicide summary sheet or is that more of a freehand uh, notebook? It, it's a freehand notebook. Okay. And once that information is um, placed in that notebook, how or what method is it transferred? I think you testified to the IMAX system. Right. So if, if there was anything that was noteworthy at that time, um, whenever a deputy had an opportunity, they would, they would go to the workstation and transfer that information. Okay. And you also testified that it was basically, I think your verbiage was a pass on. Do you mean from one shift to the next? Yes. Or who's ever coming in to relieve that person at that time. So deputies, they have to have a bathroom break, lunch break, and it just after a while sitting and staring at a person, we need to rotate staff. So, so the staff member is fully aware of what's going on. Okay. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness? Yes. Captain Vida, I'm showing you what has been previously marked and admitted as people's exhibit number 16. Do you recognize that document? Yes. And what is that document? This is actually um, what we would call a event history, and this is a, a printout from our um, jail management system, IMAX. And so the exhibit that we were just previously speaking with, that's the computer system um, that those notes would have been put in, is that correct? Correct, or some of them, yes. Correct. Have you had an opportunity to review some of the notes in, um, listed in People's Exhibit Number 16? Um, periodically, I've, I've looked through okay. through his screen. All right. And um, I want to go back to reasons for which the defendant would be allowed out of his cell. Um, what is the rec time situation at the jail right now? Currently, rec is suspended. Because, and why is that? Because of COVID. So we, we suspended rec in its entirety, I want to say, right right before Christmas, and we have not reinstated rec collectively across the board for our facility yet. Okay. Prior to the rec time being suspended, was the defendant offered any recreational time? As far as my recollection was, he was. Do you know if he participated in that rec time? I don't think he did, if, if my memory was right. Okay. Is it fair to say that inmates can refuse to participate in rec time? Yes. Okay. Can, part can inmates refuse to take a shower? Yes. In fact, did the defendant in this case, did he refuse to take a shower for a period of time? Yes. Does the defendant have access to any educational opportunities? Yes. How so? Um, there's an inmate tablet system, and on the inmate tablet system, there's there's different resources, and one of the resources available is education, K through 12 education through Khan Academy. Okay. Now let's talk about this tablet. How like, how does the defendant request usage of that tablet? He just asks a deputy, and the deputy will provide him with a tablet. Okay, is that tablet specific to him or is it shared amongst other inmates? It's shared amongst other inmates. And is there a time usage, meaning is he only allowed the tablet for say an hour a day or 10 minutes a day? Um, as far as I know, there's not a, a like a 10 minute time limit. There, there is a time limit um, based on demand. So if there's several requests in that area, we may only have a handful of tablets, then we have to divide them up equally. Um, but I haven't heard that that's been a problem, at least in the jail clinic. Okay, now on the educational portion on this tablet, um, what service or app is offered? Khan, Khan Academy. Khan Academy. Mm -hmm. And what other apps are listed on this tablet? There's, there's stuff for books, movies, there's a for like a personal calendar there's something to view his his mail photographs um, to send a kite 
to uh, grievances, law library. I think that may be. All right. Now, as an administrator, are you able to track his activity on that tablet? I'm able to go in and look to see what what he's looked at or what he's participated in. Um, there's just some things based on the platform that I'm not able to. Okay. But. Um, and prior to arriving here today, were you able to um, determine whether or not the defendant has accessed the Khan Academy application on the tablet? I was not. Okay. And actually, I, I probably should clarify, this tablet is shared amongst other inmates, correct? Correct, but, but each person has their own personal sign-on. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get to. <clears throat> has the defendant been able to access any games? or email yes I'm sorry um, I forgot to, to mention they, there is games and there's a mes messaging component to this as well okay now let's talk about the games first how are these who determines what games are on this tablet um, when when we entered into a contract with smart communications um, they sent us a, a host of games and someone in the agency vetted those games and made a determination that they're appropriate and along with the movies and whatnot, so 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 that that was included in the tablet. So out. these games that are on this tablet are they specific for this defendant, or are they available to any other inmate in the jail? They're available to any other inmate in the jail. Now, again, specifically as an administrator, were you able to determine if the defendant has access any games through his tablet? Yes. Were you able to determine if he's read any books through his tablet? I, I don't recall seeing books. Okay. Do you have any knowledge of whether or not he has read any books at all since he's been um, confined at the Oakland County Jail? My understanding is that, that he's read some Harry Potter books that were given to him from the um, library, um, but specifically other titles, not off the top of my head. You also mentioned that the defendant is able to receive mail. There's two types of mail, is that correct? There's email and then what we would traditionally call a snail mail, is that correct? So, yes. The, the email's not like I can send a, a, an email to anybody in this room. There, there's a specific process that that has to happen. Can you explain that process? So the, the process is that he has to send an invitation <clears throat> to let's say yourself you in return would say yes you would accept that and then you would have to contact IC, IC or excuse me smart communications and create an account and then at that point the billing would go back and forth there's a cost for this messaging and these these connections okay now is the defendant able to receive messaging from individuals from whom he doesn't know Yes. And how does that happen based upon the example you just gave? I guess I'm a little confused. Let, let me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, he, there, there's a vetting process that, that's put in place and in theory that, that should not have, that should not happen. So I, I apologize, that was my No, that's oversight. okay, so the vetting process. Can you explain what that vetting process is? Um, it's, it's basically just a, a ver verification and a, um, and then with um, smart communications, um, an account is set up, and there's you know payment that's available, and then they allow that to occur. And yes. What is a commissary account, Captain Vida? A commissary account is um, um, Mr. Crumbly will have what we call a trust account. And the trust account is like a bank account, a checking account. And one of the things in the jail that they can do is they can purchase commissary. And what exactly is commissary? Commissary is anything from um, paper to shampoo to different sources of food, um, you know, chips, stuff like that, like a canteen. Okay. When the defendant arrived at your facility on December 1st, did he have any money in his commissary account? My, my recollection was is he did not. Okay. 
Does the defendant have money on his commissary account today? Yes. In regards to the amount of money he has in his commissary account, how would you classify that um, in relationship to the other inmates at the facility? It's pretty excessive. I'm sorry, you said pretty excessive? Pretty excessive, yes. Who's able to put money on his commissary account? Pretty much anybody. What, if anything, has the defendant purchased with the money in his commissary account? To my knowledge, um, paper, pencils, deodorant. Is there any limit to what he can purchase, meaning as long as it's within the, the, the items available to purchase? Correct. No, there's not. In fact, does the defendant have any restrictions at all since he's been at your facility? No. Does he have phone privileges? He does. Besides being able to watch movies on the tablet, does he have access to any other um, devices that have a screen? There's a TV just adjacent to his cell. Is he able to control that TV? No. Who controls that TV? The deputy does. Is the defendant allow professional visits, meaning either from clergy, attorneys, or professional visits from a therapist or psychiatrist? Yes. If necessary, is, if necessary, would he be provided medical treatment? Absolutely. Who, if anyone, does that inmate, or excuse me, who, if anyone, does this defendant have contact with? He, he would have contact with, of course, deputies. He would have contact with the medical staff, um, including his uh, psych doctor, um, case, case worker. Um, that's pretty much it. Maybe someone who came and delivered his commissary to him, um, but I can't, can't think of anybody else. In, inside the jail, and then of course his attorneys when when they want to visit him. Now again, his cell is located within the clinic area, correct? Correct. Is that clinic area open 24 hours? It is. Is there someone always at the nurse's station? Usually, yes. Let's talk about the defendant's meals. How are his meals delivered to him? Um, Usually, a, a deputy will bring them to him. And initially, was there a concern about his his food or lack thereof, his food intake? Yes, there was. And what was that? Um, th there was there was a concern because he he um, dropped his body weight, and the the jail clinic, in conversations with Airmark came up with an alternative meal plan for him to get him to eat because the analysis was that he just wasn't consuming his food. And it sounds like that is something that the the jail took upon themselves to make that change. Is that correct? You're correct. Since the defendant has been housed in your facility, have there been issues or concerns brought to your attention regarding whether it's his um, his cell upkeep or um, his food or any any other reason, any other thing? Um, the the only thing that I, that I recall was, um, you know, of course, the discussions about his food. Um, I haven't been alerted to anything real significant through the casework staff. Um, there, we, we had to move him from one cell to the next because there was a concern about um, what he was doing or, or if he was able to access something which they found you know the ceiling was missing so we had to you know move him over but but short of that um. okay. one 
One moment, Your Honor. Sure. Captain Vida, due, the, due to COVID, let me ask, are the inmates supplied some type of cleaning supplies by any chance? Yes. And was the, was the defendant supplied those cleaning supplies? He, he has the ability to ask for them at any time. We don't, because he's in a single cell, we don't house them or, or give them directly and let them keep them in that cell. And to the best of your knowledge, Captain Vida, are the defendant's needs being met since he's been housed at the Oakland County Jail? I'd say absolutely. No further questions. Thank you. May the attorneys and Captain, if you could approach, please. Good afternoon. Hi. If I ask you something that you don't understand, just let me know and I'll try to ask it a different way, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the maximum occupancy of the Oakland County Jail? 1,100 and some change. Do you know how many inmates you currently have housed? 931 as of this morning. Now, you stated um, that it was kind of a team decision when Mr. Crumbly was brought to your facility uh, to place him on a constant watch. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you stated that, that the purpose of that is to establish a baseline behavior. You obviously don't know the inmate. You know that his charges obviously are serious ones, but you don't know his day-to-day -day behavior. Fair to say? It's fair to say. And he was on this constant watch until about halfway through January of 2022, correct? Yes. Okay. The records indicate that the, the log sheet stops on January 14th of 2022, and I think that's the one from constant watch. So is it fair to say around that time he was taken off constant watch? Yes, January 14th, I believe. Okay. And who made that decision? Was it, again, a team decision to take him off of the constant watch? It was. So that's not something that the caseworker can decide herself? Um, the case the caseworker can make recommendations. Okay. While he was on constant watch, he was not able to uh, purchase commissary, correct? You're correct. So he's only been able to purchase commissary since being taken off of constant watch? Correct. Okay. And he is now on something called behavioral watch, is that correct? Correct. All right, and you were asked by the prosecutor um, if you were made aware of any issues um, involving Mr. Crumbly, and I believe that you stated the only issues that you could really remember were was the food issue, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, if an inmate was having behavioral issues, was not listening to deputies, um, was doing things that were prohibited, is that something that would be placed in either the constant watch logs or some other log that the jail keeps? Yes. All right, I want to talk about, um, well, let me back up. You stated that there is one other juvenile currently housed at the Oakland County Jail, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And um, there is no contact between that juvenile and Mr. Crumbly, correct? Well, their, their cells are right next to each other. Okay. Um, are they allowed to interact with each other? Not like this. I mean, they can, they can talk through their cell. I mean, they're, they're right next to each other, so they can probably stand at their cell door and talk to one another. Okay. 
Is that something that would be encouraged or discouraged by the deputy? We wouldn't encourage that. Okay. So besides leaving the cell to have in, uh, a visit with uh, his attorneys in the eye block or taking a shower or going potentially into a clinic room, Mr. Crumbly is in his cell 24 hours a day, correct? Correct. You stated that recreation for the entire jail was suspended in December. Do you remember when in December? It was right around Christmas. Okay. So if Mr. Um, you stated that Mr. Crumbly was offered some sort of recreation, but he declined that? Correct. Would that be noted in any of his jail records? It should be in IMAX. Okay. So if you were to reinstate recreation, how would the recreation uh, be achieved for Mr. Crumbly since he has to obviously be kept away from adults? He would go to recreation by himself. Okay. And what does that look like? It's a gym, it's a room, it's... It's a gym. Is there any um, idea when recreation will begin or are you still trying to figure out the COVID situation? We're, we're hoping to have a, a firmer idea probably in about another week as if the COVID numbers decrease. Um, was there any staffing shortage at the jail due to COVID? Sure, yes. Do you know how many deputies are employed actually at the jail? Um, roughly 250. I want to talk about um, the cell that Mr. Crumbly is housed in. So mm -hmm. you described it as completely cement except the front part, which is glass, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, is there a reason that the light is kept on 24 seven, the light directly above his bed? It's, it's in a medical unit, it's a high visibility cell. So that is not something that can be turned off. It just, it's, it's constantly it's, daylight, correct? It's constantly daylight. Okay. And he does not have a window to like the outside, is that correct? Correct. Now, the clinic that he's housed in it is still used as an actual clinic for other adult inmates, correct? Correct. Okay. So there are adults that come in and out of that clinic, just not in and out of the defendant's cell, fair to say? Well, they, they come in from a totally different area than where the defendant is, so he wouldn't have contact. Okay. The prosecutor uh, asked you some questions about um, money that was deposited into his account and you stated that he has a significant balance. Um, Mr. Crumbly has no control over who deposits money into his account, correct? Correct. Okay, so if someone was, someone that he didn't like was to deposit money, it's not as though he can say no thank you and that money would be returned, correct? You stated that there is a TV that he could potentially see from his cell but that he doesn't have the ability to control it, correct? Correct. Um, currently in the jail, I, I know that there was some COVID issues in the kitchen. Are the inmates receiving hot food or cold food? Cold food right now. Thursday, that's supposed to change. And what does cold food consist of? It, it can consist of sandwiches to MREs. MREs are like military grade. Correct. Um, due to his age, obviously, um, adolescent boys especially require a higher calorie diet than an average inmate. Um, has any, anything been done to achieve making sure that Mr. Crumbly is able to take in the appropriate amount of calories per day? My understanding through Aramark, which is our uh, meal contractor, that in consultation with our dietitian, the meal that is being provided to him meets that caloric intake as well as they provide him um, what they call an adolescent meal, which is, a, which is a supplement that, it's like a snack bag supplement with milk and fruit and stuff with his meals. Okay. So the answer is yes. I have no further questions, but I believe Ms. Hopp may have a few. Thank you. Thanks, Thank ma'am. Ms. Hopp. Thank you. Okay, 
Captain, you would agree that the Oakland County Sheriff's Department has custody and control of Ethan at this time, correct? Yes. And you have since December 1st of 2021, correct? Yes. Now, um, are you aware of the laws concerning education of juveniles in the state of Michigan? Yes. And you're aware that um, you're required to um, have him attend school daily, correct? Objection, Your Honor. Um, at this time, I, at, at this time, I, I'm, I don't believe that the jail is responsible, and I believe that's pursuant to the statute. I, I understand that we're proceeding on the 1101B3, but um, quite frankly, I don't, I, I think that's an improper question because pursuant to the statute, the jail is not responsible for his education. Response, Ms. Hutt? He said he was aware of the law. I asked, was he aware that they had the responsibility? He's either aware or he's not. I agree. I mean, that was the question. Thank you. I agree. Sir, you may answer to the extent that you are actually aware and you have personal knowledge. With that being said, Ms. Hopp, if you could re-ask your question. Sure. Certainly, Your Honor. Are you aware that the jail, not you personally, um, as a person or entity having control and charge of a person between the ages of 16 and 18 is required to provide daily education. My understanding of it is, is yes, that we are responsible with specific parameters and we've, we've gone through those and we're currently still working through that. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, is the jail certified or qualified under Michigan law as an alternative education program? Not for juveniles. How about a strict discipline academy? I'm not familiar with what you're discussing, point to bring in. How about a school of excellent, excellence organized as a cyber school? No. And do you have any teachers, certified teachers on staff or accessible to you to come in and teach school to your juvenile inmates? Not for juveniles, no. And you <laughs> mentioned this Khan Academy program that is on the tablet, correct? Correct. Are you aware that that's a supplemental to normal schooling program that doesn't count towards a diploma or any type of a degree and is not accredited? No. Uh, have you ever used it? I have not. Um, so you don't know that the schooling is, you know, five, seven, ten minute videos about a certain school subject, correct? I have not used it. And you don't know that it doesn't have any sort of high school literature or English program, correct? Um, it was my understanding that it does, but. Okay. Um, and that's on the iPad that's shared, correct? It's not an iPad, it's a tablet. A tablet, yes. sorry. Yes. Tablet. Um, and would Mr. Crumbly have access to that tablet for, say, eight hours a day? He, he would have access to that tablet. I can't say verbatim that it's an eight hour block of time that he would have, but he would have access to it for a significant amount of time. And you said the time was limited though, correct? I said it could be limited based on what the demand is. Now, have you or anyone under your direction um, met with Mr. Crombley to show him how to use that program? I personally have not. And you've not directed anybody to do that? I personally have not. So you don't even know if Mr. Crumbly can access that program, do you? Um, it's right there in the tablet with all the other options that are available. So if I press that on the tablet and get a message that says error, you cannot connect, you wouldn't know about that? Well, then I would. I would assume that he would bring that problem up to a deputy so we can have that addressed. 
Now, other than you, is there anyone else that monitors his tablet usage? Um, I can't. I can't unequivocally answer that question. I don't know. And if he were to be able to access this program and had questions about the schooling or education provided in the Khan Academy program, uh, are, are there any resources there for him to get answers to questions he may have? I'm not familiar enough with the Khan Academy. Have you been in communication or, to your knowledge, anyone on your staff or at your direction with any school district to supply him instructional materials, supplies, textbooks, assignments, things like that to uh, fulfill the Michigan requirements regarding education? Our corporation council has been involved in this. Anybody specifically? Yes. And who would that be? Marianne Yerge. And pursuant to those conversations, other than this tablet program, to your knowledge, nothing has been provided to Ethan for education purposes, correct? You're correct. And so as he sits there in jail, he's not getting any sort of high school credit toward a diploma, correct? <clears throat> not at this given moment, no ma'am. No further questions, thank you. Thank you. That you just mentioned he's in with the light that's on 24-7. Are all of the cells there that would house a juvenile, they all have the same lighting issue? Or are there cells he could be in where he doesn't have a light on 24-7? And that row of cells those lights are those lights are fixed they stay on is that the only place he can be in there at this point at this time yes when he was on that constant watch and couldn't have commissary which sounds like it would be math wise about six weeks or so okay he wouldn't have access to toothbrush toothpaste shampoo in the jail unless you can pay for it you don't have it no. That, that's factually incorrect. Well, that's the question I'm asking. Yeah, so, so, so no, we, we would provide toothbrush, toothpaste, um, soap. Um, so all those things the, are provided. The necessities to It's not part of commissary. Food. Correct. Because you had testified earlier the toothpaste and toothbrush would be in commissary. So the basic I, stuff they get. I didn't testify to that. What, right. what, I, what I said was that th those are options to, to purchase. There's hygiene items that are available for for hygiene items such as that, for, for people that don't have access to commissary, we, we hand out upon intake as well as replace upon request. Okay. Well, and I don't think, I didn't mean to offend you. I don't, that wasn't clear then, just basically okay. said commissary. And so if somebody can't afford anything there, at least the basic necessities of hygiene yes, is given to them, regardless Absolutely. of how much or how little money is in their commissary. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And soap is one of those elements, correct? Yes, ma'am. Is there towels? Uh, are towels yes. provided and then, yes. I assume, picked up and go to laundry or whatever? Yes. They get a towel a day or? No. Um, I believe it's once a week and they do their linen exchanges with their uniforms. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I did have a question, Captain. He's currently under a behavior watch. Is yes. there any indication of how long this behavior watch would last or could last? Um, probably just just based on um, what what our circumstances are and who he is and the high profileness of it that we would maintain that for a while. And that's nothing abnormal when we have high profile inmates. Um, we, we maintain what we call you know the, these behavioral watches or for other circumstances as well. But okay. I hope I answered that for you. You did, thank you sir. Based on that, I know you had finished your question. Any follow-up questions based on my questioning? No, Your Honor. To defense, and I know you all have rebuttal. Any rebuttal? Your Honor, I just have a few things I would like to clarify. Sure. Captain Vida, mm -hmm. to the best of your knowledge, Ethan's parents are still his legal guardians, correct? 
Yes. Hence, they would still be responsible for his education, correct? Correct. Regardless of their incarceration status or not. Correct. In regards to the tablet usage, the defendant has been able to access games, correct? Correct. He's been able to access his emails, correct? His messaging, yes, ma'am. He's been able to access his mail that is scanned in, correct? Correct. And all that is on the same platform as the Khan Academy, correct? Correct. You were very specific when you said the meal that is provided to the defendant. So I want to talk about the meal that is being provided to him. Is he getting the same meal as other defendants in the Oakland County Jail? No, he's receiving a kosher meal. Is that also a cold meal or some other type of meal? Right now it's a cold meal. But that kosher meal is separate and distinct from the meals that the other inmates are receiving, correct? You're correct. Are other inmates receiving an adolescent pack? Um, just the other juvenile okay. that's housed under jail. And why is the defendant in the role, referring specifically to the question that um, Ms. Deb McKelvey asked regarding um, the defendant's cell and the light that's on, and I believe you testified it's because of the role or the cell that he's currently um, assigned to. Why is he assigned to that role? He's assigned to that role um, specifically because of, because of his status as a juvenile and its sight and sound separation from adult prisoners. Captain Vida, has the Oakland County Jail ever detained a school shooter? No. Is it fair to say that you, that as a facility, you're still working out the details? Yes. Are you concerned at all about the defendant's safety while he is in the care and custody of your facility? Absolutely not. I have nothing further to Thank you. I do just have just a follow-up. Very briefly. Of course. Thank you. You were you testified earlier that you were able to log on and see that Mr. Crumbly was ac accessing games and other things, but you were not able to verify that he was actually logging on to Khan Academy, correct? You're correct. Okay. Um, you were just asked, uh, has there ever been a, a school shooter that's been housed there? Um, currently, there's people charged with multiple counts of murder, rape, armed robbery, and other serious life offenses. Fair to say? Sure. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Any reason why this witness should not be excused? None, Your Honor. None, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You may step down. You are excused for today. Please don't talk about your testimony with anyone. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Please return to the box here. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. People, you have any further witnesses? No further witnesses, Your Honor. Thank you. And Ms. Lawton, do you, does the defense have any witnesses? We have no witnesses, Your Honor. Thank you. And I will, as mentioned earlier, we had a brief status conference um, earlier this morning. As you all know, under the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Convention Act, the act requires for me to give my decision in writing. And so I'm going to take this matter under advisement issue my decision hopefully by the beginning of next week. In the meantime, I'm going to allow the parties to file supplemental briefs. My understanding is that there's additional information um, that either party may want to present to the court. It's not required, but you may. It's an invitation. If you do want to submit supplemental briefs, it, they are due on Friday by 4 p.m. And specifically supplemental briefs as it has to do with the defendant's placement. Anything else from either party? Your Honor, would the court allow us to give a brief closing argument with regard to the evidence that you do have before you in the form of the exhibits as well as the testimony that you've heard today? Yes, very briefly. Thank you. Thank you, and you may proceed with comments. <clears throat> Thank you. Your Honor, the defendant committed a calculated premeditated mass murder upon other juveniles in a structured school setting. Placing defendant at a juvenile detention facility, a child care facility, as it was couched by the witness, Ms. Calcaterra today, such as Children's Village, a setting surrounding him with other juveniles, not to mention at-risk juveniles, would be entirely inappropriate and against the interest of justice. 
the Oakland County Jail has and will continue to provide a safe and appropriate placement for defendant while ensuing, ensuring safety for the defendant himself, the children currently housed at Children's Village, and the public at large. As my colleague Ms. Washington mentioned earlier, the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act requirements make federal funds available for states that plan for and implement various procedures regarding the detention and confinement of certain juveniles. That is what is implicated in the form of this hearing. The finding that defendants should be housed in the Oakland County Jail has been made pursuant to Michigan's statutes and uh, court rule previously by Judge Karniak at the district court. And it is only federal funding considerations that implicate this hearing. In order for the court to review whether it remains in the best interests of justice to continue his placement at the Oakland County Jail. Now this court has been presented with multiple exhibits to review in order to get a glimpse behind the curtain at the true essence that is this defendant and the risks he presents. You have before you a 15 year old with the sophistication and the capability to plan out and execute a large scale school shooting and the evidence presented to you during this hearing shows a deeper and more calculated mind than any typical 15 year old. His ongoing text with another juvenile, which you'll find in the exhibit book, um, arguably a kindred spirit to the defendant, delve into the depths of the defendant's mind and give us a glimpse of what he is capable of thinking, what, is he, what he is capable of concealing, and what he is capable of doing when he is ready. The sampling of text messages you've been provided between defendant and his friend date back to February of 2021, and they reveal much about the defendant and certainly should compel your honor to be very concerned about placing this defendant in a relatively less secure setting with juveniles, and certainly one which mirrors in so many ways the scene of his original crime. The defendant himself tells you through his own words when you read his text that he should not be moved from the security and oversight of the Oakland County Jail. In some of his texts, he tells his friend he's so glad they can talk to one another and not be afraid to let their, quote, masks slip, end quote. That defendant, uh, that defendant appreciates that his friend is, again, I'm quoting, like the one person who is as fucked as me and shares it, end quote. He goes on to explain that, and I quote again, in public, you have to put on a mask to blend in, end quote and how they, they, in their friendship, have gotten to a place where they've shared their individual darknesses. And according to the defendant, quote, we aren't afraid to let our masks slip to each other, end quote. Defendant goes further to say the scary thing is, I like being this fucked up. And that's the end of one of his text threads and one of his quotes to his friend. That is the person, that is the kind of person that we are contemplating putting with other juveniles who are much less sophisticated, at risk, that he would gravitate to. He talks about in his texts and then in his journal about how he wants to explore his darkness with birds that he has found, wanting to make them suffer and hear their screams. And he doesn't stop at the text. He doesn't stop at writing in his journal. He goes on to actually record videos of him doing those things. And you'll hear his voice, you will hear the suffering of the bird, and you will know that it is not just words, it's not just thoughts, but it's things that he has set about to do. His word that he uses is that he wants to torture those birds. You'll see the video. You will also see the picture of a separate bird that he decapitated and he writes about in his journal having taken it to school and is thrilled that he didn't get caught and finds others foolish or stupid for not catching him. He tempts others with his actions. He reveals them and the only people who had an opportunity to do anything about it, those who live with him 24 seven did nothing. If these don't amount to prior delinquent acts, I don't know what would. And that is one of the factors that this court is bound to consider. And it doesn't stop at the text, it doesn't stop at the journal. Um, in his journal, he talks uh, about uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the videos that he makes on November 29th, the day before he executes his fellow students. And he tries to execute so many others. 
uh, he makes a video about what his plans are, who he wants to kill, who he wants to kill first, the type of person. All of those details are things that he clearly, he has wrote about, he has thought about, and he sets about to do. And again, with no warning to those outside of his own home. He writes in depth in his journal about his desire to stalk, rape, and kill a fellow classmate, his plans for the school shooting, what he'll do, how he'll do it, who he will kill first, how he's putting in his plan to action. And among those steps is enlisting his own father to get him a nine millimeter gun because that particular weapon is more desirable to maximize the number of kills that he can get. He also speaks of how he'll be remembered. November 30th, 2021 was not an isolated incident for this defendant. This is someone who wants to be remembered and he has contemplated how he wants to be remembered. Not as someone who made a positive impact on society, not someone who brought something uh, good or meaningful to the table, but he wants to be compared to the likes of Hitler or Dahmer or the Parkland school shooter, using them as inspiration for actions that he sets about taking. His actions on November 30th were not impulsive, they were not accidental, they were calculated, rehearsed, and well thought out. And not just his actions, but what he wanted to achieve from them. He anticipated and wrote about his expected life behind bars with the intention that he would be remembered forever. He contemplated the pros and cons of going out in a blaze of glory, of being killed or, or, or committing suicide at the end of this all. But neither of those he expressed would satisfy his desire to be remembered forever. And his behaviors since his incarceration have not changed. They've continued to demonstrate that he hasn't altered his way of thinking. His request on December 17th, you'll see in the exhibits uh, from the jail, his request that he, re how do I get my fan mail, my hate mail, and, and my commissary. He knows that he's going to have people who admire him and people who hate him alike, and he wants that notoriety. He communicates with others and takes the opportunity to commiserate with those who gravitate toward him and share his feelings, those that commend him for his actions. Um, he takes time, and, and, and again, I'm asking the court to consider, and, and this also goes to some of the relative ability between the two uh, institutions to be able to meet his needs. You know, we've talked a little bit about the education that's offered to him. He's got Khan Academy on that tablet, as well as uh, video games, as well as books, as well as the ability to communicate with those who he wants to communicate with. And if you read through these, not only the content of his emails with people, but also the frequency with which he has access to that tablet. This is how he chooses to spend his time. He doesn't choose to spend it on Khan Academy. He doesn't choose to spend it on education. And he didn't choose to spend it on education prior to his criminal actions. Um, and, and some of the disturbing things and some of the um, telling things about these email communications, um, he, he, he's on it almost daily, and if not daily, he talks with other juveniles, other people who are of his similar age. He commiserates with them about um, you know, things that they go through and things that he's gone through. But overall, he indicates to them that it's not so bad in here. I get a TV, I get good food, the deputies are nice. He's the one who's giving a first-hand account of his experience in this jail. And it's over and over and over again. He also takes time to mention to some of his fans out there, my next court date is February 22nd, maybe you can watch it on TV. This is what he wants, he wants to be noticed, he wants us to relish in his behaviors, and if he is given the opportunity to converse one-on-one -on -one with little to no supervision, because we won't have these in writing when he's at Children's Village, when he's talking to another juvenile in the corner of the gym, when he's talking with them at the lunch table, and that should scare all of us, and I know it scares me. This is not a person you should place in the position of having contact with and potential influence over other juveniles, much less those juveniles with, who our courts have already determined to be at risk. To place him in a school, a lunchroom cafeteria, a classroom setting with juveniles, just like he enjoyed as he planned for the day he would take off his mask and execute those classmates, is an injustice that no one should have to bear. 
The witnesses that you've heard from in the accompanying exhibits reveal that while both facilities offer a claimed secure option, one is far superior in handling this defendant and all that he brings to the table, and that is the Oakland County Jail. Placement in the Oakland County Jail rather than Children's Village serves the defendant himself. You heard from the manager of Children's Village about concerns that she has, not only, and she has to be concerned with all of the juveniles in that child care facility. Um, she has concerns about all of the juveniles that are currently housed in that secure detention facility. She also has concerns about the defendant himself. Contrary to that, there's no concerns by Captain Vita if he's housed at the Oakland County Jail. There are no services or opportunities that he could or should receive in the juvenile facility that he is not receiving in the Oakland County Jail, including opportunities for education. Most importantly for this court, however, is that continued placement of this defendant in the Oakland County Jail is what serves the public and the interest of justice as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Ms. Lofton? Yes, Your Honor, as I stated previously, I, I understand that the charges could not be more serious against Mr. Crumbly. But again, that is not the only factor that the court must consider when deciding where the best placement is for Mr. Crumbly. Um, Ms. Collins details some of the text messages uh, that you will see as part of your exhibits. As Defense Exhibit A, you will see Mr. Crumbly around this time is texting his friend, Brady, I need help. I was thinking of calling 911 so I could go to the hospital, but then my parents would be really pissed. He details seeing things, seeing people, hearing voices, and then they disappear. He discusses telling his parents again that he needs therapy, that he needs treatment, that he needs to talk to someone, that this time he's going to tell his parents about, about the voices he is hearing. This is someone who was having, in my opinion, a mental health crisis, and no one did a thing. This is someone who had no prior suspensions or issues with his peers whatsoever. No, no prior criminal charges. We've heard today that while he was at Children's Village, there was no issues. We also heard today that when he was placed at the jail, he, as a precautionary measure, was placed on constant watch and that they wanted to establish a baseline for his behavior. We also heard he was taken off constant watch. If Mr. Crumbly was someone who did not follow directions, did not follow orders, I would assume that he would still be on constant watch. No issues of misbehavior while at the Oakland County Jail. Ms. Collins argues that Mr. Crumbly is, is maybe of higher education or, or smarts of someone that is 15 years of age. I would agree. Mr. Crumbly is a very, very smart kid. He is. But that should not then be used against him. Chil the individual that testified from Children's Village was very clear that her facility is a secure facility. That there are things in place there that if they have concerns about an inmate safety, that they can place them on a type of watch um, or security measure that keeps them from having the availability to have pencils. Well, we heard from uh, Lieutenant Vita today, Mr. Crumbly has pencils and there's been no issues with the pencils that he has. But at Children's Village, if they really had those concerns about Mr. Crumbly, they have a procedure in place to make sure nothing happens. Again, when these offenses were committed, Your Honor, um, my client was hallucinating, seeing things and hearing voices. He was not sleeping. That is detailed in these text messages. He was extremely anxious, and he had no one in his corner to get him the therapy that he so desperately needed. We have been able to visit him, I think, between the three of us, probably close to 20 times. Has he adjusted to life in the jail? He has. Do I think that that's the best place for him? I absolutely do not. He is completely isolated. And for someone who has mental health issues, isolation is horrific. He is in that cell 24 hours a day, except if he is leaving the cell to visit us or to take a shower. Lieutenant Vita was very clear in relation to the education aspect. He can't say if Mr. Crumbly has logged on to Khan Academy or not. 
The emails uh, that Ms. Collins mentioned, Your Honor, these are emails from strangers all around the world that send Mr. Crumbly emails. These are not individuals that Mr. Crumbly went looking for or that he knew. These are individuals, mostly women, who have taken it upon themselves to message him and give him well wishes and message him extremely frequently. Um, I would say that at Children's Village, we would be able to control that communication. Um, as a 15-year-old, obviously, being in the jail, he doesn't have a parent saying, who are you talking to? It's kind of free, and, and it's a free-for-all, really. Anyone in the entire world could message Mr. Crumbly if they set up an account. So again, Your Honor, I would ask you, uh, when you review all of those exhibits, to look at the statute and look at the factors that are enumerated by the JJDPA. Um, and I believe that after the testimony today and after a review of the exhibits that will be presented to you, I do think that the appropriate placement for Mr. Crumbly is at Children's Village. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Lofton. And no need for rebuttal. Um, again, the court... Your Honor, do I get to argue? Just with this hearing, I don't need an additional argument really to consider. Um, I am going to allow the attorneys to file supplemental briefs. And so if there's supplemental information uh, that you all want to put in the brief, please add it to the brief. Um, as we had a brief conference here at the bench, I know that we're coming up against time here, and I would hate to have to bring everyone back another day to finish argument. So for those reasons, if, any, if you have additional argument, please enter it into your supplemental brief. And again, supplemental briefs are due February 25th, 2022 by 4 p.m. With that being said, there's also the information. I am in receipt of a binder. Parties have stipulated to a few exhibits, quite a few exhibits, um, that the court also needs to review in making its decision. With that being said, anything else from the people? Not at this time, Your Honor. Thank Th you. Thank you. Anything else from defense? Your Honor, I do not believe that we have a return date. Obviously, we are waiting on a criminal responsibility report, but I don't believe that there is any forthcoming date uh, on the schedule. That is correct. I will enter the date in the opinion and order once I draft it, determining because once I, I have to make a decision if he's going to stay in the jail. If, he, <clears throat> if I make the decision to transfer him to the Children's Village, there's no need for a review hearing every 30 days. Sure. Um, however, if I make the decision to keep him in the jail, then there's going to be a need for a review hearing. So de depending on how I rule, that information will be contained in the opinion and order. Understood. Thank Anything you. Anything else from either party? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, deputies. You may take Mr. Crumbly. Thank you, deputies. I appreciate your time. Thank you.